Hello and welcome to Reefcraft. Today we're going to be talking about wild chalice corals, and this one has been requested in the comments quite a few times. But before we start, what is a chalice coral? Now it's really a mixture of a heap of different genuses and species all put into one melting pot because they kind of look the same and grow the same. But they do come in an absolute massive array of colours and patterns and shapes. And today we're going to be looking at some of the wild species I've found over the past couple of years. One of my favourites is this Echinophilia aspera. This species tends to have this paint splatter type coloration to it. They tend to be encrusting with hillocky sections in the middle, but also can have the periphery starting to whirl or plate off the rock work. They tend to grow in this more shaded area, and you can kind of see with this next one that it's growing underneath already uh, Acropora that are above it and beside it, and it's kind of semi-shaded. Up next we have Mycidium elephantotus. The coralites on these tend to be reasonably large and nose-shaped, and are always typically facing the perimeter of the colony. Elephantotus also develop these ribs and ridges that radiate out from the center to the perimeter of the colony. I also find these guys are pretty crazy colored. Those pink dots are actually the coralites, but they've also been referred to as the eyes. This next one I know is a Mycidium, and it probably is Elephantotus. However, I'm not 100% sure but this is the nicest chalice I've probably ever found in my life. The coloration on this thing is absolutely mind blowing. It was also found down really deep, around about 30 meters, which goes to show the incredible adaptability of these species. This next one's from the same genus. This is Mycidium robocaki. The entirety of this coral is actually a lot thinner than other Mycidiums. The polyps can also be arranged in rows, but also typically have these crazy colored eyes or coralites. And I also find the deeper you go, the typically the further these guys spread out. Like you can see in this one that was around about 20 to 25 meters, which actually makes it look like a completely different species. This is a cool one. This is Echinomorpha nishihira eye. This one is rare, and you don't typically see it in the aquarium industry either. They usually have a solitary polyp or a collection of just a few. And here's a color variation of it. I mean, look at those white pinstripes on that red base. This one would be super interesting under UV. This next one is actually a completely different genus. This is Oxypora lacera. They have these teeth-like structures all over them, which give them that rough, bumpy kind of texture. They also have a serrated edge, and if you look closely, you can actually see it around that colony. Here is another Oxypora, but I actually don't know what species it is. I've just been calling it the White Walker Chalice, but if you know the species, drop a comment. Echinophilia petula is a really cool species of chalice. Now, they typically have this large central coralite, which you can see across all this footage. All the other coralites are irregularly shaped and widely spaced across the remainder of the plate, also usually immersed into the colony. Next, we have Echinophilia echinoporoides. And damn, that's a mouthful. These guys are typically more encrusting colonies, but sometimes have nodules like you can see here in the center of the colony. I also find that these guys enjoy the turbid water around steep drop-offs and generally in shaded areas. The coralites towards the edges of the colony also tend to be inclined that way as well. This next mycidium forms contorted tiers and you can kind of see it just grows every which way. And for the life of me, I do not know what this species is. They have a common name of the convict chalice because of the stripes that run along its body. And my guess is it's some sort of echinophilia species. Interestingly though, they grow in deep water and I also find that they tend to grow just off the edge of a sand bed in the deepest parts of the reef. So yeah, drop a comment if you know the species. These next couple of species, I don't really have a lot of footage for, but just to give you an idea of where they live and what sort of habitat and corals surround them. This blue one's pretty cool. This one's Echinophilia pectinata and was growing in an area full of macroalgae. The growth form on this species breaks away from what you'd expect from a chalice coral. This is Echinopora herida, AKA the branching chalice. It's such a cool growth form and here you can see it again on a reef in Bali and then here, in Dampier Archipelago in Western Australia. This is another one I'm not 100% sure on, but I'm going with Echinophilia orphiensis. My other guess would be Mycidium elephantotus, but 
these guys have the real helicky, random assortment of polyps that face every which way, and then it becomes more of a plate on the outside. I could be completely wrong, but yeah, good guess. And this one is another Echinopora species. This is Echinopora pacificus. And I have little to no footage of this species. It's kind of bland looking, and that's the only excuse I have for it. And I also know it's common because I see it all the time. On to the last few now, this is a Kinopora lamellosa. I love Montipora, and this one constantly tricks me from a distance. As you can see, it gives you that whirling, scrolling type. And you look at this one, I was actually swimming down because I thought it was Montipora, and then, yep, definitely not. And they blend really well into the reef. I mean, look at this reef shot, you can kind of see a few scattered colonies in between all the Acropora. And I thought this was an interesting one to add in. This one was actually growing on top of a reef flat and would be exposed to heavy wave action and it's actually growing flat rather than scrolling. And this one's gonna bring home how hard it is to ID some of these chalice species. This one, I don't know. It's a bit of a common theme in this video, I know, I'm sorry, but they are incredibly hard to ID. This was actually growing in a very dark area under a ledge, which was really cool and I really like the pinstripes on it, so it should be easy ID, but yeah. Not 100% sure, so let me know if you think you know. Cool. Anyway, well, that's about all I've got today for Chalice Coral. Remember to like and subscribe, and drop a comment if there's any sort of species or any sort of animals that you want to see in future episodes. I'll do my best to put something together, and if I don't have enough footage, I'll get out there filming. All right, I'll catch you on the next one.